Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and we are going to be painting a goldfish in this acrylic painting video tutorial. And I am going to first go over the materials that we're going to need for this. There is an optional traceable template for this. I will be drawing this with a white chalk pencil after we paint the background. So you can choose to use the traceable template or you can draw this with me. Both are uh, great options. And I will be using a three quarter inch flat brush, a 12 bright brush, a number four round brush, and I used a round bristle brush. So this brush has the natural kind of wiry bristle hairs on it. And I use that in the gravel area. If you don't have that brush, you can use any brush and um, do the stippling technique with it. As far as the colors, I used Mars Black, Turquoise Blue, Prussian Blue. This is optional. If you don't have Prussian Blue, you can use any dark blue, like a phthalo blue. Titanium White. I used Cad Orange Hue, Burnt Sienna, and Primary Yellow. Also all colors that you can substitute and use whatever colors you have available. And I used a 11 by 14 inch canvas for this. Another th um, thing you can do on any size canvas, you don't have to do this on the 11 by 14. We're gonna go ahead and start. I'm using a three quarter flat brush. I'm gonna load that in the water, kind of tap it dry, but let some of that water kind of distribute into this paint. This entire background consists of vertical strokes with Prussian blue and turquoise blue blending on the canvas. So we want a variation of the dark, dark blue and the Prussian um, that gently blends with their turquoise. And so we're gonna just fill our entire canvas with this. It should be a relatively thin layer of paint and I'm gonna gently add like little bits of water in there that helps thin that down. You just don't wanna add too much water because then it gets drippy and uneven in some areas. But basically, this entire canvas is filled. This painting also works as a black canvas painting. So if you're recycling a canvas or an old painting, you can essentially um, paint that black and then do this kind of background because it's a dark background. So that can work for this as well. Um, I am basically gonna go silent here. So it's based a really, really simple step of filling this entire canvas, vertical strokes, and try not to over blend. I'm going to, um, on purpose, leave some of those streaks in there. And some of those streaks will look brighter, some will look darker. I'm gonna reload my palette with some turquoise. So uh, the ratio of Prussian blue to turquoise is about 50-50. If you want the background to be slightly more darker, you can add more of the Prussian, but the turquoise is also a relatively dark color and it blends really pretty with the Prussian. But, so you would just wanna make sure you have some variety in there. So some areas are going to be a little bit lighter because of the turquoise and some areas are going to be a lot darker because of the Prussian. I'm noticing with this particular background, I'm not sure if it's the colors, um, but my paint is drying faster than usual, which is why I'm doing this fast, but also loading my brush in a little bit of water a lot and kind of distributing that into the paint. Um, you don't wanna ever load your brush in the water and then go straight to the canvas. I recommend that when you do load your brush in a little bit of water that you um, distribute that into the paint first and then go to the canvas. That way we don't have to worry about dripping or uneven amounts of water in there. But here in Phoenix, Arizona, it's been very dry and very warm lately. So I noticed there's like a change this time of year with painting. That my paint gets dry and dries faster. So I have to kind of accommodate for that versus in the winter time. It's definitely more humid here and cooler. So the paint dries a little bit slower. So sometimes depending on the time of year and the season, you kind of accommodate for how fast or slow your paint dries. Um, some ways around that besides dipping your brush in water, you can spray your palette with like a fine mist spray bottle. 
and that'll keep your colors on your palette uh, from drying too fast. You can also spray your canvas um, before you start working on it with a fine mist spray so the canvas is wet to begin with. So when you're done with this background, you're going to need to let this dry all the way and you can decide if you want to use the traceable template or you can draw the fish. So I'm going to be drawing the fish, fish with a white chalk pencil. You can also just use regular white chalk. Um, I like these pencils for more precise drawings, more detailed drawings like this fish is a little bit more detailed. So our fish is not necessarily center in the canvas. He's a little bit more to the left. If you want to center him um, a little bit more, you can definitely do that. So I'm gonna draw the um, top of his body. So there's like a curved shape that goes to almost kind of like a point to the right where his mouth is. And then it dips down. Yep rounded belly area and over here where that tail is going to be it's going to be kind of narrow so it's almost like we're drawing an eye shape as if we we're going to just draw an eyeball on our canvas so there's our initial shape if you like measurements the length of this shape right now is about five inches wide and the height from the lowest curve to the highest curve is about three and a half inches high so you can use those measurements to kind of guide you. I'm gonna draw a curve about two inches inwards from the point of the nose on the right, um, point of the mouth on the right. And it's kind of like a curve that kind of divides where his uh, eye face area is going to be. Then I'm going to sketch out his dorsal fin, so this kind of a curved line it goes upwards so the fins are gonna be kind of hard to sketch for now I'm just gonna draw them as basic shapes even though we're gonna paint them um, as these sheer sort of pieces and not necessarily a shape so this piece the pelvic fin this one's gonna go down and the pectoral fin is gonna go two little pieces kind of hanging down and the back tail fin this can be a little bit exaggerated if you want. So I made mine super long. This painting can also be a beta fish painting. If you want to change the colors of this to not be orange and gold, you can make it a different color. So I'm just kind of loosely sketched the fin to kind of in the direction of how I'm going to paint this and then a circle for the eye. The nice thing about these chalk pencils is that it works just like chalk and will erase. It erases with the eraser that is attached to it. It doesn't erase very well with water, I noticed. Uh, it takes a little bit more effort to erase with water, but the back of this will erase it just like a regular pencil. If you are using the traceable template, the white graphic paper will probably be your best friend for this because the dark background and the white graphite paper will allow the drawing to show up. However, the dark graphite paper probably will still work. You can also rub white chalk on the back of your template and then draw in front of it. And then another thing you can do is this can actually be a couple's painting. You can have the fish be closer to the right side edge of the canvas and you can have uh, your partner paint another fish that's facing the other way and your two fish can be meeting together in the middle. So that's something else you can do with this painting. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the actual painting part. So I'm gonna load my palette with three colors, titanium white, cad orange hue, and primary yellow. So white, orange, and yellow. And I'll be using a 12 bright brush for this. this is, it's like a half inch flat brush. So in order to make our goldfish super bright and give it a lot of contrast against that dark background, we need to prime it with the color white first. And we're going to use the 12 bright brush to do that. So basically load that brush into your white and we're going to paint the body of the fish white first. And we're going to do this in contouring strokes. That means that I'm gonna outline the shape of my fish 
I'm doing this with very thick lines, strokes, and I'm just going to fill it in solid with the white. I'm going to go as close to the edges of that of the drawing, but I don't need to. I can adjust this. So if you want to adjust your drawing too, you can. I'm just going to fill that in. A solid coat of white. And then we're going to end up having to paint over the eye and head area. So I'm just going to kind of use the tip of my brush to define that shape of the head area, but then I'm just going to go ahead and cover all this with white too. Orange and yellow are translucent colors, meaning if we did not paint this white first, the orange and yellow would not show up very bright. I'm just using that tip of the brush to really define that shape. Kind of lost the form in my head area, but that's okay. And then let's go ahead and prime some of the fin, but we're going to do this dry brush style. That means that we're not going to make this as opaque and solid as the body of the fish. We're going to drag our brush. So using the full width of the brush, we're going to drag it. We're going to let the edges of the fin just kind of disappear and kind of wisp away, if that makes sense. So I'm holding a little bit of pressure on my brush at first and then letting go and letting that paint, that white paint, just kind of fade out. And you want to do that for each of your fin areas and you want to drag that in the direction that the fin is going. So it starts out kind of bright white and solid and you just want to release the pressure and that is really going to let the edges look translucent. So when you're doing this, um, you don't want to load a lot of paint on your brush. You want to load just a little bit and that's going to make it give it that effect. So you can see the differences that happen with the body, which is solid white versus the fins so far are a little bit translucent. So we're going to do the same thing with the tail. So this is where we can kind of have some fun and exaggerate this goldfish's tail. So this piece of the tail is flowing upwards and you can see how it's the same kind of technique. It starts out kind of more opaque and then I just release the pressure of that brush and let it turn into a dry brush where it just kind of fades out. And in order to get it to fade out, you have to hold the brush lighter, like you're barely letting it skid the canvas. Um, if you press hard, it's gonna create that too opaque of a stroke. But if you press very light and let it just barely skid the canvas, it's gonna allow your stroke to be very nice and light and translucent. Let's go ahead and rinse all that white off the brush and wipe it dry. And um, ideally we would want the first layer to be dry by now, but if it's still a little bit wet, it should be fine. My painting, as mentioned earlier, my paint's drying fast, so this is dry for me. If yours is still really wet, I would wait and then, because um, we, we don't want too much of that white blending with this orange, otherwise it's gonna be kind of a pastel color. But let's do, we're gonna do this in, we're gonna do orange first and then yellow and then white, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do the darker part of our fish is kind of on the outer parts and then there's kind of light yellow and shiny in the middle. And I'm just gonna take that orange and I'm just outlining the edges and contouring that. So there's the head area. I painted that curve piece in there that kind of divides kind of where his gills are. So that's all I did with the orange and then now I'm going to introduce the yellow. So we don't want to wait for this orange to dry because we want to let this yellow kind of blend with the orange. This is really going to give it that golden color. So without rinsing the brush and filling the rest of that body in with yellow and I'm just gently blending it with the orange. There's a little bit of orange that's kind of dragging in with the yellow, but I'm going to not blend it all the way. So there's some parts, there's some streaks of orange that got there in the middle, some yellow that kind of blended with that yellow, and that's okay. So then we're gonna add some brighter white in the middle. It's gonna give it that kind of shiny look. 
So I'm just going to wipe the brush off. We don't have to rinse it off. Just wipe it off. Grab your white. And I'm just going to do a few full width kind of curved strokes just in the middle area. Going in a curved direction is essential. That's going to make it give it that kind of 3D look. Um, but not going back and working it at all. I'm just going to leave it like that unblended. Then I'm going to take my yellow, orange, and there's still white on my brush. I'm going to add a little bit more outline right here where the head edge of the mouth is but also with the white so this white and yellow and a little bit of orange on my brush i want to really define that curve right here that's going to divide where the his gills are and where the eye is going to be on the right side so that curve right there is pretty important. So you wanna do that with a lighter color, such as the white mixed with yellow. And then we can start painting our fins in. So our fins, same exact technique as what we did to prime the first layer. We don't want this to be super opaque and we don't really need to cover all the white. We can have a lot of that white still showing through. It's gonna give it that kind of pretty glowing effect if we let that white show through. But I'm gonna use both the yellow and the orange here. So I'm gonna load my brush in some yellow and then paint over the fin that I just, that I painted earlier, but not cover all the white. And then grab my orange, paint over the fin using the same sort of dry brush technique. That means you're only loading a teeny bit of paint on your brush. If it helps, you can wipe the brush off to ensure that there's only a little bit of paint on your brush. You're letting that brush barely skid the canvas so you're not pressing down hard. It needs to be light, kind of feathery, translucent. Also, I'm changing the width of the brush. So sometimes I'll use the full width. Sometimes I'll hold the brush on the side and do thinner strokes. So there's kind of a variety in those kind of strokes. So this one right here, that's using just the tip of the brush to make the thinner stroke. So that creates kind of a different kind of stroke versus the tail towards the top. I use more of the full width. Let's introduce some white in there as well. So I'm gonna go back over some of these strokes with the white as another layer to this. It's gonna add some brightness. Few down here so just using the the side of the brush that's going to create some thin lines and right here and let's leave the dorsal fin the way it is so before I do any more details to the goldfish I'm just going to let this dry the way it is um, and I'm going to start doing the other things that are in this painting including the gravel seaweed um, bubbles so let's go back and load our palette with turquoise and the Prussian. So yeah, same colors in the background, but we're going to make this go in a different direction so it stands out. So I'm going to load my brush, my three quarter inch flat wash brush in Prussian and turquoise, and I'm going to paint where I want my gravel to be. So this is the first level, first layer before we add the gravel. And I'm just using the tip of my flat brush to kind of define the sort of wavy area in the gravel. And then I'm going to do the seaweed. So if you find it difficult to use this big flat brush for these wavy strokes, you can definitely switch to a round brush. In fact, I am going to eventually switch to my round brush. But I'm going to paint using the tip of the brush, wavy, long strokes. and it's going to look somewhat subtle in the background because it's the same color. And I'm going to introduce Mars Black to my palette. It's going to add a little bit of black to some of these seaweed lines. And that's going to make them a little bit darker, give them a little bit more contrast so they stand out. And just do this throughout. Um, try, I didn't do any seaweed pieces that are going over the fish. I didn't want to overlap anything. So all of this is really just going behind the fish in the background. You want to create a variety of different lengths. So some are taller, some are shorter. Variety in your colors 
and pieces that are overlapping in different directions. I'm going to go ahead and rinse the three quarter off, set that to the side and start using our round brush. So this is the number four round brush and I'm going to do more seaweed. So you don't have to do this much seaweed if you think it's maybe a little bit too busy or um, whatever. You, you can pretty much decide how much or how little you want to paint. But I'm going to do lighter color in here. So this is the turquoise and titanium white. So that's going to create more variety and brightness and just different lengths. And I'm not overlapping any of the fish with this. Next, I am going to do the gravel texture. So I used the round bristle brush for this. And like I said earlier, if you don't have this brush, you can just use any brush and kind of stipple this. You can even bundle Q-tips together and stipple this. So we're gonna use the same colors, the white, the turquoise, and the Prussian. And we can introduce black in there as well. So I'm just loading my brush in all those four colors, different amounts of those and going back and forth and just stippling it. And that's gonna create texture in our gravel area. If you add some extra white to the tip of this brush, it's going to allow some of those rocks to really kind of stand out. So just make sure that you leave a lot of the dark still showing through. So just kind of add that white sparingly throughout the gravel area. And then we can add black to kind of help balance that out. So just going back in, add that black kind of sparingly throughout, but try not to cover everything. Next, let's go ahead and add the eye on our fish now that it should be dry for the most part. And we're gonna be using Mars Black and our number four round brush. This is kind of a detailed step. If you feel more comfortable using a black paint pen for this, you can do that. Um, basically, we're just gonna make a little dot where I want that eye to be. And then I'm gonna form that into more of a circle, so a really small black circle. Before we do any more detail to the eye, let's let that black dry. And we're gonna go ahead and do the scales next. So let's load our palette with Burt Sienna. And we'll be using that orange as well. Rinse your brush off and let's mix brown and orange together. So about equal amounts brown and orange. Although when we do these scales, we're going to kind of vary that color a little bit. So we don't have to have it all be the same kind of shade. We're going to start on the left part of that curve and paint little tiny curve strokes that are kind of staggered like brick, although you don't have to st stagger them perfectly. And we're just painting sets of curved lines. And we're gonna do this pretty much all throughout the entire fish area. So I'm just working my way from right to left. little curved lines all throughout. I'm 
When you go to reload your brush, you can grab different amounts of brown or orange. And I'm gonna take these little curves and go all the way to where the tail starts and then stop. We can introduce some darker colors in there as well on the scales. So we can take some of this black and maybe some of the scales down here, a little bit darker. I am going to finish the fish's eye next. So assuming that black circle is dry, we're gonna do this next step. So let's go ahead and uh, re-rinse my brush and add some fresh white in there because my water is so blue, it's turning my white blue. But I want to mix a teeny tiny bit of brown into white. So it turns into like a very light kind of cream color, sand color. And I'm gonna paint a ring or a circle around the black circle so that it gets the outer part of the eye. And then I'm gonna rinse that off and grab just the white. I'm gonna do a curved bright white line at the top and a curved bright white line at the bottom and then one white dot in the upper right center area of his eye. We're gonna do the bubbles next. So with the bubbles, we're still using titanium white and our number four round brush. We can simplify these bubbles by just painting white circles and adding like a simple highlight to them. I'm gonna kind of demonstrate a little bit more of an advanced bubble if you wanna try this. So. With this kind of advanced bubble, we're going to, instead of doing a circle, we're gonna do a solid circle, and but we're gonna make this kind of a watercolor consistency with the paint so that it's a little bit sheer and see-through. So what I'm doing is I'm painting circles, but I'm filling them in with a very, very thin sort of watery layer of this white. So as many bubbles as you want, you wanna to try to vary the sizes, some are larger, some smaller. And again, this is a very thin layer of paint, utilizing about 50% water in this. Um, if you're working on an easel, you may wanna try working flat so your water doesn't drip down. So you can see how it's translucent. do kind of a few more bubbles in there. Then for this next layer on the bubbles, I am going to use Prussian blue. So that's gonna make these bubbles a little bit more translucent. So I'm gonna go back over them with some Prussian blue, rinse my brush off and dry it. This one does not need to be watercolor consistency. And in the center of all the bubbles, just gonna paint these kind of rounded strokes, filling in the center, but leaving the edges visible. Also, if there's some white still showing through in the middle area, that's okay. So I'm just painting them in these circular strokes, kind of starting from the center, but then going outwards. Almost like I'm scribbling that blue inside of the bubble and I'm not trying to cover up all of that layer of white. And I wanna leave the outer edge white. That's gonna give it that bubble shape. So if I painted over the outer edge, it wouldn't really show up anymore. And then I'm gonna go back and add a white highlight to all of my bubbles. And it looks best when all the bubbles have the highlight in the same sort of spot. So on the lower right quadrant of each of the circles, I'm doing like a little white 
curve. Some of them ended up more on the the right side of the circle, but for the most part, they all are towards the bottom right. Little tiny white sort of curved. You can do two if you want, or one, and that gives that pop of brightness in the bubble. And then go back with yellow. So this is that primary yellow, and there's still white on my brush. And on the left side of each of your bubbles, I'm just painting a curve. Um, for the bubbles down here that's happening on the top part, so this is just the, um, the fish reflecting its color on the bubble. So that would be in the direction that it's facing the fish. So we can always go back and add more bubbles later. Um, but this next step, I'm gonna show you how to detail some of the fins with a darker kind of outline. So this is four round brush and Mars black. You really wanna loosen this black because these are very thin lines. So as you're loading your brush, you can kind of twist it to get that paint right there on the tip, very thin. And I'm just painting these black sort of curved lines on the dorsal fin. Starts out kind of thick, and then I'm releasing the pressure very thick, very thinly, just like what I did with the flat brush earlier when I kind of did thick and then let it barely skid the canvas and just kind of fade away. So that's kind of what I'm doing to all of the fins here. So same thing over here. You don't want to cover up all of it. Just a few darker lines in there. So down here, it starts out dark towards the bottom, release the pressure and it kind of fades away. And then the back fin, kind of the same thing. These ones, you don't have to do too many black lines in here, but just a few darker lines. And if we need to go back and kind of adjust the tail, so I'm gonna add some more yellow in the tail where that top part of the tail would be overlapping the bottom part of the tail. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna rinse that black off, grab my white and yellow, and right here, that part's gonna be kind of the on top overlapping part. And then I can add a few more strokes of yellow in there, but I don't need to overdo it. Um, at some point when this is all dry, you can erase any leftover chalk lines, drawing lines. You just wanna make sure everything is dry before you do the erasing. I'm gonna erase some of that very carefully. So this is just a regular eraser. I am then going to do a Another thing to my fish here, I'm gonna rinse my brush off and grab just the orange, and I'm gonna add a kind of a second coat of just this orange on the outer edge of the fish. So here's some fresh cad orange hue, nice clean brush, and I'm just gonna go and paint the edge of this fish with this orange color, just to kind of get that edge to be a little bit darker. It creates a little bit of contrast. I'm outlining just the edge. And then I added just a few orange strokes up here in the dorsal fin area and kind of all throughout with the other fins as well.
Another kind of final touch up we can do with this, and this is optional, you may think this looks a little bit too busy, but I'm painting little tiny bubbles that are kind of going up in a sort of wavy direction, kind of all throughout the painting, a little bit through the seaweed, a little bit up here in the upper part of the painting. And I'm just using the titanium white and number four round brush to paint little dots. Another thing I did was add another layer in the gravel area, but this time using the round brush. I'm using round brush and titanium white, and I'm painting more rocks, but these are just little curved, kind of thick strokes all throughout. So this adds kind of another dimension in the rock area. Then I added just a few little white curved strokes in the scales. Not all of the scales got little white strokes next to them, just a few, kind of more towards the middle area. And lastly, I touched up some of these bubbles. If you want to add more bubble, bubbles to this, if you want to add glitter to this painting, this is a good candidate for glitter. Um, but that is it for my demonstration of how to paint a goldfish. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.